Oh, the greatest pleasure is, is it's probably um, it's probably when you make make the most beautiful sentences when you're finally you've finally got one sentence flowing into another in the right kind of way, and you and you start to get this kind of river of language, this flow. Um, think that obviously doesn't that obviously doesn't happen every day. Um, but oddly enough, I'm one of those kind of uh, writers who uh, I mean I work every day, so. I always look forward to getting to the to the to the desk. You know, I'm always looking forward to what I'm going to discover. Because I guess for me, writing is is this journey into the unknown. So, especially at the beginning, when I start a book, I'm uh, I'm really going into the dark with no sense of where I might be going or where the the process might end. So it's it's exhilarating that feeling. You know, going into the unknown. It's like um, it's like a form of travelling. Yeah, um, I, I, I call it the intuitive stage. So I always feel as if when I, sc I'm, I'm a writer who writes many drafts of a book. You know, some writers inch forwards um, word by word, and, and at the end of the first draft, they've pretty much got what they want. I write um, flat out, really fast, first time round, with, as I said, with no knowledge of where I'm going. So I make all kinds of mistakes and. and and I, I kind of take scenic routes, I crash, you know, I start again. doesn't really matter because I know I've got another six, seven, eight attempts at it, you know. Same time, when I, when I write in that way, I nearly always discover something, something magical, something fascinating, something that's going to interest me for a long time. You know, I, I isolate something. And so when it comes to the second time round, I'm already removing stuff and then working on working on the material that I think is going to prove interesting. Um, so my theory about it, which I've <laughs> come up with recently, is that I'm actually, I start as kind of in a female role, very, very intuitive, um, prepared to make all kinds of mistakes, prepared to be very emotional with, with what I'm doing. And as the process continues through many, many drafts, I become, if you like, more male, become more rational, more logical, um, until by the end, you know, the ninth, tenth draft, I'm, um, I'm the most, I'm hopefully the most ruthless critic of my own work. I, j I just know now, I, I feel it. Um, I, sometimes I would say that there, with a book there's, uh, I mean I'm, I'm not one of those writers who shows things to people before it's done, but with some books I'll get to a point after a number of drafts where I think, actually, I can't, I'm sort of feeling I've got, the whole book is a blind spot, you know, and I'm not sure whether I'm seeing it right. And, I, and I've tried to trick myself into viewing it different ways, like I'll write, a, I'll write a draft using a different typeface, so all the line breaks are different. You know, I, you try and trick yourself into seeing the thing as it really should be seen. Um, in the end, though, uh, there comes a point where you think it's time to show it to someone else. And, you know, this is where you need your trusted readers and, and they change over the years actually. But I always think I need um, two or three and, and from both sexes and, um, and they're the people who would say, would be absolutely honest with what I've done. So you know if they say this is, no one ever has said it's rubbish, but you know if they did, if they said, or they said you know this whole section doesn't, just didn't work for me and then I would take that quite seriously. Um, but knowing when it's finished I mean, you know, Paul Valery famously said, you know, a poem is never finished, it's only abandoned. I think a nov it's the same with a novel. There's, a st there's an extent, there's a, there's a sense in which, you know, you, you, um, you in the end have to abandon it because, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect novel. Um, and you're not going to be able to get there and you spend your life trying to get there, but, you know, each new novel is another attempt. Um, but there is a point where you abandon it and you, by then, I usually have ideas I'm going to move on to um, and you know it's a, it's a chance to get it right. Seven days a week, seven hours a day pretty much sums it up. Um, I need to be in contact with the material every day. I've experimented of course as, as we all do you know I've tried I've tried writing through the night, I've tried uh, writing in, in the week and taking weekends off, I've tried all kinds of things and um, 
I've just discovered that I need, I just need to be attached to the material, involved with it in some way every day. Even if, and this very rarely happens, but even if I go in, sit down and, and write nothing, you know, the sense in which I'm thinking about it, and I'm in, t I'm in, I'm in front of it, and um, I'm sort of entering that world, because it's, uh, it's always a world that you're, you're going into. And while you're in that kind of phase, um, in that seven, you know, when I'm in that kind of seven day a week, seven hour a day thing, uh, really that world's more real than, than the real world. <laughs> So, you know, mm -hmm. so someone who comes to the door, you know, the postman is, is kind of like a ghost, you know, whereas someone I'm writing about on the page who is totally fictional is, is, is flesh and blood. I have what I call, I have books that are talismanic. Um, they've changed slightly over the years again, but there are some that remain the same. And these books are always, um, you know, they're always not far away. They're always a few feet away from me, either in my the bookshelf behind me or on the desk and um, I guess what they do is they they I, I just often I just open them up and read a few page a couple of pages you know and they remind me of what's good of what's possible and um, and I guess it is a kind of inspiration to read something like that and it's you know I'm beyond the stage of imitating what I'm reading in that way but um, sure I have I have those books and you know at the moment the, um, what would those books be at the moment would be Housekeeping by Marilyn Robinson. It would be Light Years by James Salter. Usually I've got something by Jean Rhys or Flannery O'Connor. Um, for a long time it was Michael Ondaatje's Running in the Family, which is, you know, this really a short jazz novel that he wrote that most people still don't know about. Um, but that was from the days when he wasn't famous and I used to, you know, give that book to people all the time, rather in the spirit of World Book Night, you know, and they, they would never have heard of him. And they'd read it and they'd love it and then they'd tell me and that was kind of the, the joy of it.